So Microsoft did some very, very interesting announcements just uh, last week. One is, you know, it's funny, I've been watching Azure since it first came out, two, two and a half years ago. And when it first came out, I just thought, it was crazy. You couldn't access it except as a user, not as an administrator. You couldn't use terminal services, sorry, remote desktop services to RDP into it. You had to go through this weird web interface. You were so limited in the stuff that you could run on it. And when you add to it the fact that nothing you have running now runs on Azure. I think to myself, my God, what, who would want, well, not who would want this thing, but actually this is the question, who would want this? It's, it's massive, it's cool, high, incredibly highly fault tolerant, incredibly fast and stuff, Facebook. You know, like running Facebook on it would make sense, but I think they've already got a network. So what they've done over time is we've seen RDPs come in, the ability to use different levels in the user token have come in, there's lots more tools, some really cool tools, lots of add-on service bus that lets you do the on-prem in connection to with the, it's all of a sudden, every time, and it's astounding. You know, we use the phrase internet time. The cloud has accelerated internet time. In the two and a half years, Azure's got fantastic stuff. I mean, every few weeks, there's some other great news. The big news, as I'm sure our listeners, viewers know, is that about a week or two ago, there, Microsoft is now in the infrastructure as a service business, which means that you can just spin up regular old virtual machines. And you know they did it, and they, man, they, they outdid Amazon. The, the portal now, which used to be a portal that was run based on, down in the corner it said, um, hosted by Alenian Services. My question was always, why are they not hosting this on Azure? I always got to laugh, can't do it anymore. So it's, it's good looking stuff. You've got different sizes of VMs. You just click in switches and things like that, and it tells you how much it's going to cost. It's really cool. Uh, it's a little, it's not exactly like a VMware virtual machine. There are some limitations on the way the disks work and the, the main disk, the operating system's on. It's got some kind of weird aspects to it and it, you, sometimes you don't want to put data there that you want to survive a reboot. But there's some really interesting stuff there and prices look reasonable, I mean, in line with Amazon, which is great because that means we'll see Amazon, one of the big players is Amazon, Rack, Rackspace is another one, and I think soon it'll be Azure. So it'll be fun to see how the prices begin to plummet. So that's, that's some real exciting stuff. Uh, another thing that, that they talked about in depth that they may have spoken about before that I did not know was, so you build a virtual machine and it's got a hard drive on it. And let's say you're running some application and the application is storing some data on an external drive in some format. And you think, well, what are they doing in the cloud? I'm thinking they go out and buying the cheapest hardware they can, putting it in racks. And basically what you're doing is you're, you know, you're running enterprise apps on non-enterprise hardware. I was dead wrong. The virtual machines, if you spin up a, a disk, it's a VHD, virtual machine. It's immediately replicated to two other machines. And at least one of those guys is geo-replicated over to another data center. Wow, very impressive, very impressive. They're saying they'll give us 99.95% uptime. Uh, yeah, who knows, you know, we'll, we'll see about that. So it's almost like you don't have to sweat the backups too terribly much. But, of course, we need backups for different things. One reason we need a backup is that something dies. That's handled. But what if somebody does something stupid? There is a built-in thing, it's a VSS reader, whereby you essentially click a button, you create a snapshot. So, you know, that's a quick uh, initial look at virtual machines. And if you're thinking about and clouding some of your applications, it looks like Azure's making it easy. Another thing about, about Azure that makes it easy is if you're currently doing Hyper-V, well, no surprise, you could just upload a VHD off your Hyper-V cl cluster straight up, 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 to the, uh, up to the cloud. So that's exciting stuff too. I got a chance to talk about the cloud as well. I have this keynote that I've been doing for a while uh, called Cloud Computing, a Lapsed Economist's View. And it's kind of a contrarian view. I call myself the cloud gnostic. And uh, the contra contrarian view about, uh, about clouds. Again, not negative. Just I say there are goods and bads. Most people talk about clouds say everything is wonderful. There are, there are just unicorns and roses and flowers. And it's not like that. I mean, it's like any other business decision. It's going to go well for some people, not so well for other people. Should you lease a car, should you, should you buy a car? There's no good answer. Anyway, so I talk about the, the goods and bads. I was surprised here that Microsoft asked me to do it because, you know, I don't, it's not a, everything's wonderful, everything's wonderful, everything's wonderful talk. So I rewrote it, and it's my first time doing it, just did it, we'll see from the evaluations whether it works or not. You know.